this video is on Aldama. We will see the origin, the root value, the course and the branches of Aldama. So usually the question that comes in exams is describe the Aldama under the following headings. And these are the origin and the root value of Aldama, then its course in the upper limb, the branches and the structures which are supplied, that is the distribution. And we will uh, not consider applied aspect in this video. I will make a separate video and I'll put the link of that video uh, in the description box of this video. Let us begin with the origin of the ulnar nerve. Here in this picture, we can see this is the axilla. Ulnar nerve, it arises in the axilla from the medial cord of the brachial plexus. So this is the medial cord of the brachial plexus and the red colored structure which you see here, this is the axillary artery. So medial cord is medial to the axillary artery and ulna nerve in fact is the continuation of the medial cord of the brachial plexus. Let us see what is the root value of this nerve. The root value is C8 and T1. This ulna nerve is also known as musician's nerve. Why this is known as musician nerve? Because this supplies most of the intrinsic muscles of the hand. And these muscles are used for playing the string instruments, musical string instruments. So that's why uh, it is mostly used by musicians and we call it a musician's nerve. Let us look at the course of the ulna nerve. We'll start with the axilla and then in the arm. In this picture, you can see here, the ulnar nerve is lying medial to the axillary artery. I've already told you this red structure is the axillary artery. So next to the axillary artery will be axillary vein also. So this will be the neurovascular bundle here along with the branches of the uh, brachial plexus here. So the ulnar nerve in the axilla lies medial to the axillary artery and the vein. And then it reaches the anterior compartment of arm and here the artery, axillary artery, we start calling that as the brachial artery. Remember at the lower border of the teres major, the axillary artery ends and we start calling the same artery as the brachial artery. So ulna nerve continues along the medial side of the brachial artery till where? Till the middle of the arm, till here. That means till here where we have insertion of the coracobrachialis muscle. At that point, the ulna nerve is going to pierce the medial intermuscular septum and then it passes into the posterior compartment of the arm. So in lower half, it is in the posterior compartment of the arm and in the upper half of the arm, it is in the anterior compartment of arm. Now after that, it passes behind the medial epicondyle of the humerus. So this is the one, we cannot see the nerve here. This is the nerve here and it is passing behind the medial epicondyle. So that's why sometimes what happens if you accidentally hit the medial epicondyle, again some hard structure, a tingling sensation is felt along the medial aspect of the hand because that is supplied by ulna nerve. And we call this as funny bone. So funny bone is a misnomer. Actually, the nerve gets compressed there when you hit the medial epicondyle and that causes the funny sensation. Let us look at the course now in the forearm. Okay, before that, the nerve here, this is the ulnar nerve here. This is actually the median nerve. So this ulnar nerve, we can see here, it has pierced the medial intermuscular septum and it is passing behind the medial epicondyle. Here actually it lies in a tunnel which is known as cubital tunnel and this is a groove which is present on the posterior aspect of the medial epicondyle is converted into a canal by a fibrous band which extends between the medial epicondyle and the olecranon process of the ulna. So medial epicondyle of humerus and the olecranon process of the ulna, right? So this is the fibrous band and this canal through which the median, uh, sorry, the ulna nerve is passing, this is known as cubital tunnel because this is one of the site where the ulna nerve may get compressed. Now, course in the forearm, how it enters? 
the ulnar nerve we can see going behind the medial epicondyle now it is going to enter the anterior compartment of the forearm or the flexor compartment of the forearm how it enters we can see here this muscle which has got two heads this is the humeral head and this one is the ulnar head of which muscle flexor carpi ulnaris right so the ulnar nerve is going to enter into the anterior compartment of the forearm by passing between the two heads of the flexor carpi ulnaris the humeral head and the ulnar head right so humeral head is taking origin from the medial epicondyle and the ulnar head will obviously take origin from the ulnar bone next let us see how now in this picture when we look at the upper part of the forearm we cannot see the nerve the ulnar nerve right why we cannot see because it lies under the cover of this muscle that is flexor carpi ulnaris right so when we actually retract this muscle then we will be able to see here in this picture in the upper part of the forearm the ulnar nerve that lies on the flexor digitorum profundus muscle and is covered by or is under the cover of flexor carpi ulnaris muscle as we reach the lower part and another thing to to note here is that the ulnar artery is slightly away from the ulnar nerve when we reach the lower part of the anterior compartment of forearm then we find that the nerve becomes superficial it is no longer under the cover of flexor carpi ulnaris so you can see here this is the tendon of flexor carpi ulnaris which is medial to the ulnar nerve and lateral to the ulnar nerve is the ulnar artery so in the lower part this ulnar nerve becomes very superficial and it is also going to pass superficial to the flexor retinaculum to enter the hand along with the ulnar artery so this is another site where the ulnar nerve may get injured so now course of ulnar nerve in the hand the ulnar nerve passes into the hand superficial to the flexor retinaculum now here when it reaches the hand it is under the cover of a muscle small muscle which is known as palmaris brevis that has been cut here now here deep to the palmaris brevis the ulnar nerve divides into a superficial branch the superficial branch will supply this muscle that is palmaris brevis and will give cutaneous branches to the digits also and this is another branch which we can see which is forming a arch kind of a thing which is actually curving here from the medial to the lateral side this is the deep branch which will be giving most of uh, almost all of the muscular branches that it gives in the hand so this is the course we will revise the course once again with the help of a flow chart so let us look at the course of ulnar nerve in the axilla it descends medial to axillary artery to be specific medial to third part of the axillary artery then the course in the anterior compartment of the arm it runs downwards on the medial side of the brachial artery till where till the middle of the arm now the course in the posterior compartment of the arm at the insertion of coracobrachialis middle of the arm it pierces the medial intermuscular septum to enter the posterior compartment of the arm then it will pass behind the medial epicondyle in a tunnel known as cubital tunnel course in the forearm that is in the anterior compartment of forearm or flexor compartment of forearm it enters the forearm between the two heads of flexor carpi ulnaris it then runs downwards in front of the medial part of flexor digitorum profundus and is covered by which muscle flexor carpi ulnaris in the lower part of the forearm it becomes superficial and it lies medial to the ulnar artery and lateral to the tendon of flexor carpi ulnaris course in the hand it enters the hand by passing superficial to flexor retinaculum it then passes between the pisiform and hook of hamate there is another constricted part there and this is known as ulnar tunnel of guyon right so it will be passing between the pisiform and the hook of hamate connected by a ligament there a fibrous structure there and this tunnel is known as ulnar tunnel of guyon another site where the ulnar nerve can be compressed then it will lie deep to the palmaris brevis and it divides into superficial and deep branch 
Okay, let us look at the branches of the ulna nerve. In the axilla, it will give no branches. Then in the arm, also no branches, but sometimes it may give a branch to the elbow joint. Then in the forearm, so axilla, no branches, arm, no branches. In the forearm, the muscular branches that it gives, they will be two muscles. Uh, in fact, one and a half muscles they will be supplied and these are flexor carpi ulnaris. It is very easy to remember because this is ulnarna. So, the muscle that it is going to supply in the flexor compartment has to be flexor carpi ulnaris. And remember, it lies on the medial half of the flexor digitorum profundus. So, it will supply that also. It will supply medial half of flexor digitorum profundus which will send the tendons to the ring finger and to the little finger. So, this is simple one and a half muscles in the forearm that will be supplied by this. Articular branches to elbow and to the wrist joint. Sometimes this elbow, uh, uh, a nerve to the elbow joint may come in the arm also. Now, cutaneous branches that are given in the forearm itself. These are the dorsal cutaneous branch, but before that actually the palmar cutaneous branch arises. This arises higher as compared to the dorsal cutaneous branch. So, palmar cutaneous branch, this will supply the skin of medial one third of the palm over the hypothenar eminence, skin there. And the dorsal cutaneous branch, this will supply to the dorsal surface of the hand, which part? Medial one third of the hand, right? So, that will be supplied by dorsal cutaneous branch. In the hand, ulna nerve will give two branches. One will be superficial and the other will be deep. The superficial branch that will supply uh, only one muscle. As the name suggests, superficial has to be cutaneous. But it does supply one muscle of the hypothenar eminence and that is palmaris brevis. And then the superficial branch is going to divide into one proper palmar digital branch and one common palmar digital branch. And this common palmar digital branch will then divide into two proper digital branches. And as a result of this, these digital branches, they will supply the palmar surface of medial one and a half digits. That is the whole of little finger and the medial half of the ring finger. And the branches from these digital branches on the palmar surface, they will go to the dorsal surface also of these digits to supply the skin on the dorsal aspect of medial one and a half digits. So, this will be the superficial branch, mainly cutaneous, but only one muscle is supplied, that is palmaris brevis. Coming to deep branch now. So, deep branch, this is motor and this is going to supply now the other three uh, muscles of the hypothenar eminence. One is already supplied by superficial branch and these are the flexor digiti minimi, abductor digiti minimi, opponents digiti minimi. Four uh, hypothenar muscles are there. So, these three will be supplied obviously digiti minimi because these are the muscles of the little finger. Then medial two limbricals. Limbricals have been cut here, right? So that's to show you the introsia here. So medial two limbricals, that is third and fourth limbrical, all the introsia, palmar as well as dorsal, right? So all these introsia will be supplied by alnana. And this muscle which can be seen here, the most important muscle here, which is supplied by the alnana, which you have to remember actually, and that is adductor pollicis. So adductor pollicis, one of the thinner eminence muscle is supplied by ulnar nerve. Coming to hand, again we have two branches and these are the superficial branch and the deep branch. Superficial as the name suggests, it has to be cutaneous, right? But this will also supply one muscle of the hypothenar eminence that is palmaris brevis. The cutaneous branches here, these are now meant for the digits. And how many digits? The medial, again the word medial, medial one and a half digits. Okay. So, the palmar as well as the dorsal surface via the digital branches. These digital branches on the palmar surface, they themselves will give branches towards the dorsum of the digits also. So, superficial branches mainly cutaneous and cutaneous for the skin of 
medial one and half digits only one muscle is supplied by that and that is palmaris brevis coming to d branch this is a motor branch and it will supply 14 muscles because uh, as we i have said earlier ulnar nerve supplies 15 muscles in the hand so here the branches are to the muscles of hypothenar eminence three muscles flexor digiti minimi opponens digiti minimi and abductor digiti minimi little finger this muscle is very very important right one has to remember adductor pollicis is supplied by ulnar nerve and not median nerve so adductor pollicis is supplied by deep branch of ulnar nerve and that's why in median nerve injury there is a thumb deformity that means the thumb remains adducted because ulnar nerve is intact there so again and again i am repeating one you have to remember that one muscle of the thinar eminence which is supplied by ulnar nerve is adductor pollicis then it will supply the medial two limbricals that is third and fourth limbricals we always start the counting the limbricals from the lateral side so third and fourth limbricals and all the palmar and the dorsal introsciae they will be supplied by ulnar nerve so in total 14 plus 1 15 muscles let's revise now the branches and distribution of ulnar nerve using diagram so here we can see the root value of ulnar nerve is c8 and t1 in the axilla ulnar nerve does not give any branch in the arm also usually it will not give any branch except sometimes it may give a branch to elbow joint in the forearm we can see here there are many branches so there will be you can remember it by the rule of twos right it will supply two muscles in fact to be precise it is one and a half muscle right these muscles are the flexor carpi ulnaris and flexor digitorum profundus which half the medial half we have to always remember ulnar nerve and medial side they go hand in hand whenever ulnar nerve is concerned it has to be on the medial side ulnar bone is on the medial side right so flexor carpi ulnaris the name ulna is there and the flexor digitorum profundus medial half so these are the muscular branches then to the joints right usually this uh, nerve to the elbow joint will be given in the forearm and another joint which will be supplied here that will be the wrist joint so there are two articular branches one to the elbow joint other to the wrist joint okay so two motor branches two articular branches and two cutaneous branches these are the palmar cutaneous branch and the dorsal cutaneous branch and what are they going to supply they will supply the skin over the medial one third of the palmar surface and the dorsal surface of hand that means palmar cutaneous branch will supply the skin over the medial one third of the palm dorsal cutaneous branch will supply the skin over the medial one third of dorsum of the hand i'm not talking about the digits i'm only talking about palm and the dorsal surface of the hand so uh, by rule of two how many muscular branches two muscles how many articular branches two how many cutaneous branches two that way you can remember let us look at the cutaneous innervation now you can see clearly this is the palmar surface this is the dorsal surface the palmar surface of medial one third of the palm this will be supplied by palmar cutaneous branch which is given in the forearm now dorsal surface of hand medial one third again this will be supplied by dorsal cutaneous branch which is given in the forearm whereas the skin over the medial one and a half digits on the palmar surface and on the dorsal surface they will be supplied by the digital branches which will be branches coming from the superficial branch of the ulnar nerve